Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Miguel and in this video we will create our first timer, so an application which can be used to measure seconds and we will talk about lifetime. But I don't want to do so many words so let's get started and start Lazarus. And I want to start a new project so again let's create an application and we need some components. So let's start with a label and I want to change the font. I could set the um, font setting by myself or we could use the font dialog. Just go to the button and now we can set our font and I will choose something that looks like a timer. So something like this because I want that my grandma can read the number. And we also need some buttons, so let's drop some buttons. We need three buttons in start, stop, and last but not least in clear button. So something like this. Um, you may realize that we can't change the size of this label. This is um, yeah, the reason for this is that this label will automatically calculate the needed size and adapt the size. So if we are just um, changing the caption to one character like an H, um, this label will resize within smaller size. But you can um, disable this option by selecting the property outer size and setting it to false and now we can adjust the size. And we could also change the alignment to something like TA center. And let's change the caption to zero. What else do we need? We need to set the label name to LBL, something like display or timer. We can rename the um, form to timer. We could also rename the buttons to start and this button will be called btn start. We need a stop button so let's change button 2 and rename it to btn stop. And last but not least we need our clear button so change button 3 and rename it to btn clear. So that's basically all we need except of one important component because we need one component that kind of executes in procedure or event in a defined period and this component is called timer and you can find it in the system tab of the page control and this timer just has some properties you can also see that it has a kind of nice icon but um, don't mind, this timer will not be visible in our final application. So if I start my application, you won't be able to see the timer because it's not a visual component. And this timer has some properties. One really important one is enabled, so whether it's working or not. The other one is the interval in milliseconds. And this is the time um, the defined period of when our event will be executed again. And we also have a name. There are some really important events and the most important one is the event on timer. And this on timer event will be executed in our defined period of 1000 milliseconds, so one second. And let's start programming. So go to events and to on timer, double click it and now we are in our needed procedure. And at first I want to do a mistake because I want to show you the lifetime of variables. So I think it's better to just take a look what I will do and we will create correct code in the end or after my my demonstration. So First of all, we need a kind of counter. So we need an integer um, which should be displayed and increased. And so I will start with a declaration. So my declaration of my counter 
which is an integer. And now we could, and it should be zero at the beginning. So obviously my timer should not begin with something like 20 seconds. And now I will increase my counter by doing something like counter will equal, oops, uh, counter plus one. So if our counter is zero, the next value, value will be zero plus one. So one. After this, the next value will be one plus one to two. So two. And this will increase our counter variable. We could also do a kind of more elegant way using a special function called inc for increase. And you could also increase by 10, so something like that, but I will keep the simple version. And in the end, we also want to display our results. So let's call our display and change the caption to counter. And again, we have an integer, but we need a string. So we have to convert our int to a string by using int to string. So that's basically it and let's execute our application and we will have a problem. So you can see that this kind of procedure just executed one time, but actually it's still running. The problem is that our counter has a lifetime and we have the declaration in this procedure. So this counter will be created at the beginning of the procedure and our application will destroy the counter after finishing the procedure. So after finishing the begin and block. So and what we need to do is we somehow need to keep our counter alive. So the declaration in this procedure is definitely wrong because we have to access this variable in different procedures and we have to increase it and not destroy it. So this declaration is wrong. And there are multiple ways where we could do a declaration. We could also do a kind of declaration in our class, but we will do the simple way and use this declaration. So in our unit before the implementation part. And at this point we can again do a declaration of counter and set it to zero. And now our application will work. So, what else do we have to do? We have to develop or program our buttons. So, the first thing I want to change it, set enable to false, because um, I don't want the timer to start at the application start. The timer w should start when you press btn start. So, we're simply saying timer1 enabled true and by calling stop we will also say timer1 enabled false and now we are able to start and stop the timer so you could press the buttons and everything will work but we also need to clear and the clear button is also really simple. So double click on it to go in the on click procedure. And now we could simply say counter one equals zero, uh, counter equals zero. And we also want to display the result. So set the caption to into string counter. And if you like, we could also stop the timer. But I'm not sure whether we need this. I think 
at the first point, I like this kind of application. So what we can do is we can press start. We can stop the timer and we can, we can clear the result. So that's everything I wanted to do. I hope you liked the video and learned something and I would also like to hear some feedback and I hope that we will see us in the next video. Bye!